All right, here we go. This is Horner. We're going to look at part two for the chapter nine problems on fluids that are uh, found in your book. So if you want to look at your book, you can use that too. Uh, the Canada goose floats with 25% of its volume below the water. Uh, they want to know is what is the average density of the goose. And so since here, the goose, and I know this isn't the best writing in the world, has 25% of volume, Okay, submerged. Then we can say the density is 25% of water's density. And if that's true, then we just take 0.25 times the density of water, which is about 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, as long as it's fresh water. And then that ends up giving us 250 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's the average density of the goose. For the next problem, this is number 42. It says nine banded armadillos. Uh, I'll let you say the uh, scientific name for that. Have a typical mass density of about 1,200 kilograms per meter cube and a mass of seven kilograms, including their armor. When faced with a body of water to cross, the armadillo has two choices. They can either hold the breath and walk across the problem, or they swallow a bunch of air into the stomach and intestine, and they float across. So they want to know approximately what volume of air does it need to swallow in order to float, and we can assume that the swallowed air is at atmospheric pressure. So right off the bat, we're going to say that density is equal to mass per unit volume, and that's equal to 1,200 kilograms per meter cubed. So I'm not going to write the unit there. Um, the new density, so the new density of this animal, we want it to be equal to, so we're going to call it final density, should be 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, so it will float, because it needs to be at least the density of water. We know that that final density should be equal to the mass over, now we've got the uh, volume of uh, that uh, organism plus the change in volume, and that all needs to equal 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So let's rewrite this. We're going to say the final density should be equal to mass over volume plus mass over the change in volume. And the reason we did that is mass over volume for the original volume is equal to the original density. So this is the final density is equal to the original density plus the mass over the change in volume. Uh, at this point, we're going to move over here. And we can rearrange this equation and say that the final density minus the original density is equal to mass over the change in volume. And we can solve this now for change in volume. That's equal to mass. Be really careful with your math here. This needs to be 1 over the final density minus 1 over the original density. Uh, this is equal to 7 times 1 over 1,000 minus 1 over 1,200. And if you uh, plug this into your calculator, uh, this is actually a bigger number minus a smaller one, so it should give you a positive number here. So just remember that. Um, this 1 one twelve hundredth is smaller than 1 one thousandth. When you put that in your calculator, you'll find out when you multiply it times 7, you get about 1.2 times 10 to the negative third cubic meter. And that's how much air needs to be swallowed. For number 43, it says the average density of a fish can be found first by weighing it in air, um, and then uh, we can then uh, find a scale. Uh, let's see, the average density of a fish can be first by weighing in air and then finding the scale reading for the fish when it's completely immersed in water. So you'll do this in the lab if you haven't done it yet. Uh, if the fish has a weight of 200 newtons in the air and the scale reading is only 15 newtons when the fish is in the water, what is the average density of the fish? So there's an equation in your book that kind of shows this, but we'll go through it. So the final, velo uh, final velocity, the final volume should be equal to the volume of water that's displaced. And so that final volume would be equal to the mass of water times gravity. So that's the weight of the water divided by uh, the density of water 
over gravity. So what I've done here is I've added gravity both on the top and the bottom because I know those cross off, but that will help us because then that will be the weight of that, uh, of that organism. So let's go ahead and we know that the final density should be equal to the final mass all over the uh, r final volume. And earlier we said that um, what we'll do here is let's do the final mass times gravity over gravity. So when you multiply this, these would cross off. So we've stuck that gravity in again. And we're going to do velocity, I'm sorry, final volume, which over here we, says we said was mass of the water times gravity divided by the density of water times gravity. So now we can go through and do some math and cancel some things out. So this will be the mass final times gravity over the mass of the water, oops, the mass of the water times gravity, and then we have all that times the density of water. So why did we do that? Because now we have an equation that's really simple to use. It's just the final density should be equal to the weight, oops, sorry, let's back this up. This would be the weight of uh, the fish divided by the weight of the water, all times the density of water. So this is the equation that's really nice to be able to use for this one. So let's go ahead and plug everything in then. So this would be 200 newtons in air. We know that it's only, um, now on the bottom, this would be 185, and it's because we have 200 minus 15. So the weight, this is the weight of water that is displaced. And we know that is equal to 200 minus 15, and that gives me that 185. Now we can multiply that times the density of water, which is about 1,000. And then the whole thing is equal to 1,000. Oops, let's make this a little cleaner here. 1,080 kilograms per meter cubed. So here, uh, what we did on the bottom, the weight of the water, be careful, this is the weight of the water that is displaced. That's the weight of the water that's displaced. For number 48, it says if the average blood flow, and this is fluid flow in Bernoulli's equation, so if the average flood, blood volume flow of blood through the aorta is about 8.5 times 10 negative fifth uh, meter cube per second, and the cross-sectional area is 3 times 10 to the negative fourth square meters, what's the average speed of the blood in the aorta? We're going to use equation 9-12 from your book. And that is uh, the equation that goes like this. It says the velocity is equal to 1 over the area times the change in velocity all over the change in time. Uh, the change in velocity here is, I'm sorry, not velocity, but the change in volume is 8.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then we're going to divide that by our area, which is 3 times 10 to the negative 4 square meters. And then we're going to assume that it's just for one second, and that'll be our time. So this should be equal to 0.28 meters per second would be the speed of blood in the aorta. Uh, next problem is number 49. We only have two more here. It says a nozzle of inner radius 1 millimeter is connected to a hose of inner radius 8 millimeters. Uh, notice that these are in millimeters. The nozzle shoots out water moving at 25 meters per second. So they want to know at what speed is the uh, water in the hose moving, and then what is the volume flow rate, and finally, what is the mass flow rate. So let's start with the first one. We can use the equation of uh, continuity. So that's A1 times V1. So area times velocity is equal to the area out times the velocity out. So our velocity out should be equal to A1 over A2, all times V1, and area is just pi R1 squared over pi R2 squared times the original velocity. Notice that pi cancels out, uh, and this will be R1 over R2. That whole thing is squared, so we just factored out the square times V1. And when we do some math here, this would be 1 over 8 squared. So that's 1 squared over uh, 8 squared, or 1 over 64, times 25. And that gives us 0.391 meters per second. So that is the speed of the water 
in the hose. So when it comes out, it's going 25. So there's a big difference there between the two. For letter B, they want to know at, uh, what is the volume flow rate. So remember, volume flow rate is just the change in volume over the change in time. And that's equal to A1 V1, which is equal to pi R squared times V1. Uh, this is going to be equal to pi times the radius, which is 1 times 10 to the negative third. We have to square that times the, volume, the velocity, which is 25. And then this is equal to 7.85 times 10 to the negative fifth cubic meters per second. So that's really cubic meters per second, but we won't put the second on. Uh, the finally, they want to know what is the mass flow rate. So that's this change in mass over the change in time. And that's equal to the density times the area times the volume. Uh, so this is equal to, we've got 1,000. And we're going to multiply that times. Now, A1 times V1 will give us uh, about 7.85 times 10 to the negative fifth. So remember, that's uh, that's your volume flow right there. Um, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and solve for this. And we get 0 0.0785 kilograms for every second. So we took uh, density times A1, V1. So remember, A1, V1 is the same thing as delta V over delta T, which is the same thing as pi R squared times V1. So that's where the 7.85 times 10 negative fifth came from. I don't want to confuse you there. A1, V1 is this. Uh, density is this. And when you multiply the two together, that's what you get. The very last one is uh, the average speed of the blood and the aorta is about 0.3 meters per second, and the radius is about one centimeter. There are two times 10 to the uh, ninth, so this should be times 10 to the ninth, so it should be up top. Capillaries with an average radius of about six micrometers, which is times 10 to the negative sixth meters. Uh, what is the approximate, so this would be six times 10 to the negative six, Oops, there we go. What is the approximate speed of uh, the average speed of the blood flow in the capillary? So here we know it should be greater. Uh, I'm sorry, it should be uh, smaller because we've got so many of them. So here we're going to say that the speed in the capillaries, well, let's do this first equation of continuity. AC, VC is equal to AA, VA, where C and A are capillaries in aorta. So the speed in the capillaries is equal to the uh, area of the aorta or the area of the capillaries, all times the velocity, all times the velocity in the aorta. Uh, this is equal to pi R A squared over, now we're going to put the number n, and n is going to be this 2 times 10 to the ninth capillary. So n just represents a certain number of something. Pi rc squared times va. So now our pi's cancel out. We're left with ra squared all over n times rc squared times va. We're going to plug some numbers in now. This is 0.01 squared all over 2 times 10 to the ninth times 6 times 10 to the negative 6th squared times 0.3. And uh, when we're done, we get 4.2 times 10 to the negative 4th meters per second. Uh, if it wasn't for the sheer number of capillaries, uh, that blood would just not, not be good. It would be shooting out your, uh, your arteries uh, when they started getting smaller into capillaries um, if you didn't have as many. So that is the end of the problems.